Okay. All right. So um, the first agenda item that I added here is I just wanted to throw out a quick reminder that we have Kubevert Summit this week, uh, Wednesday and Thursday. If you click that link, uh, it'll take you to the events page. It is a free registration, but you do need to register for the event in order to receive the link um, to the actual sessions. Um, and you can see the schedule and everything there. So all virtual, highly encourage you guys to attend. Um, there should be some pretty cool talks there from a diverse um, array of presenters. So um, definitely had to mention that one. Um, and then, hey, Michael, I see that you're here. I can't recall if you had a topic. I feel like, yes, uh, last week we were discussing something that you thought about bringing here. I don't know if you if you had that or um, otherwise, pretty much all I have on the agenda for today is to go to the CDI issues. Uh, yeah. Um, right. I wanted to talk about uh, Kubert vendoring in CDI um, and how things have changed given the our uh, decreased release cadence. So uh, it used to be that um, you know CDI would release every three weeks. Um, if we were making a change in CDI, like say we're adding or you know adding a field to an API that we wanted. Um, Kubert to use, we would basically just, you know, do it in release and, 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 and then wait for a release, you know, it was going to happen soon enough, uh, and then vendor it into Kubert. Um, and that was fine because we were, we were releasing pretty frequently. Um, and, but now with these very infrequent releases where we're releasing what three times a year, um, or at least having, you know, um, more major releases uh, three times a year. Uh, what do we do? It would seem that given our current, you know, the current way we're doing things would be to essentially, um, <clears throat> so we don't have, so, okay, so given the way we release things, we basically uh, create a release branch uh, right before we do a release, uh, tag it, and yeah, build the release. So we basically make these release branches at the end, like right before we're going to release. So if we wanted to, if we were working on something now, an API change that we wanted to vendor into Kubert, um, you know, we, we, we kind of have a couple options. Um, we could either... Um, vendor in to convert a commit from main on CDI, um, which uh, is possible, but I think we've uh, kind of decided that, that that's got us into trouble before in the past, I believe. Um, the second option is uh, we can create release branches kind of earlier on in our release progress, in our release, in our development process and basically always do our work in main and always merge down into a uh, release branch. So it's basically more um, work as we go, but at least the nice thing about that is uh, when we vendor into Qvert, uh we're at least vendoring in from a release branch and not um, main. And that second strategy is what, like, say, a project like OpenShift does when they're, um, you know, OpenShift has a bunch of uh, projects with different um, dependency relationships, and they'll they basically branch uh, very early on, and I think kind of bulk merge things down into release uh, branches. So. That's a general question. I think, you know, we we used to be able to be kind of lazy. Oh, we'll just wait for the release. It's going to happen only in a couple of weeks. Um, now that releases are less frequently, what should we do? 
Uh, Mike, I have yeah. kind of different questions. Um, so do we have any uh, metric re metrics release for Q versus CDI? I mean, there is some relationship between Q version and CDI. So do we do we have already something like Q version, I don't know, uh, 0 0.59 works with those CDI's version? Uh, I don't think we do for uh, upstream, no. Uh, we do, I think, maintain mappings of what um, downstream versions match to downstream, but I don't think we have any, maintain any sort of matrix for upstream. Yeah, I think in general, we're just um, expecting the, that you would use the latest uh, latest releases together. Yeah, any, any, uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much that that's what we expect upstream, I guess. That's what's tested anyway. So I have a comment. The um, branching early and mirroring commits is going to be a lot of work. Uh, how big of an issue is it? Because we're supposed to build Qvert and CDI so that they can, uh, like, you're supposed to be able to run it with uh, the code with an older CDI and you can test it locally with the newer CDI. So we can just pretend, uh, just wait longer and test ourselves that it does the right thing. Or maybe we can have a branch optional branch which tests the latest CDI in Qvert and then we can know, uh, make it easy for people to see, yes, those changes work with the latest CDI. Yeah, like I was wondering, is there a way that we can have Qvert um, updating, like actually Qvert main is tracking CDI main for vendoring like on a fairly uh, regular basis. And then when Kubevert would switch to a stable branch, then they would expect to switch to a CDI stable branch for vendoring. Is that, I don't know if that's a model that's sustainable as well. Um. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think, I think um, the reason that, I think that that is probably fine given the way that we're doing things now. I think where, uh, because we're never really working uh, kind of two releases in the future. So say we had some super long-term initiative that we wanted to make progress on in Maine while some shorter term stuff we wanted for the next release. That's where I think things get complicated if you don't branch early. Mm -hmm. But really we should be um, introducing new APIs in a compatible way uh, as a best practice, such that if you adopt newer, you know, newer vendored code, it shouldn't affect. It shouldn't provide like unwanted side effects, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, um, that that is true. I think, again, a, a lot of this is getting into like the could haves and what haves and being pedantic about things. Like, for example, CDI is technically still beta. You know, we're not a V1 API yet, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I yeah, I mean I think um uh we don't have to be total um hardcore purists about this. Uh, um you know, I think we can do something that's pragmatic given our history and everything, but I'm just yeah. So I think I think if Hmm, I'm just trying to think. Yeah, I, I guess you could be kind of lazy about this because if we're on the main branch and we track a commit there, um, 
we can do that lazily. Like I need this thing in kubevert that's now in CDI. So I'm going to update kubevert. Even if somebody forgets after kubevert stabilizes to update the vendoring, um, I mean, we really should do that right before we branch kubevert is at least go to the latest uh, CDI main. Um, because then if we did need fixes on a kubevert stable branch, um, we would just do those fixes in the CDI uh, release branch and then update the commit to, to that. And then that avoids bringing in the unwanted uh, additional development from the main branch. So long as uh, at the time of kubevert branching, we make sure, I guess we do have to make sure to update the, uh, the vendoring at that time and not forget that. Otherwise, there could be a bit of a fast forward involved there that that's not planned. I don't know well, if that's I, making sense. I'm making a picture in my head as I describe this. I think we're we're forgetting one sort of thing here is the kubeword vendors in mainly the CDI API, which is a separate repository. Um, Michael, do you know off the top of your head if um, the CDI API is generated on every commit or only on like branched uh, branches? Um, it, it's, uh, well, I can check right now. Uh, I think that it, I think that it maintains, uh, the branches. Well, uh, if, if it's not being done on every commit, then we can't really, uh, vendor in main cause we're not generating main properly every commit. So. No, yeah, I, but... I'm pretty sure it's synced up. But if you want, if you want the API to be visible in your PR that updates the API, you're, you ought to be generating it. And if you don't care, then it doesn't matter, right? And then it's, I mean, the worst case is you update the commit and the actual vendored code doesn't change. Is that right? I mean, is there any other problem with that? Well, my main, main thought is like in CDI, we introduced a new API. Uh, and we haven't done a branch and made a you know proper release for it yet. And I want to use it in kubevert. Um, you know, I need to vent because I'm only interested in the API in kubevert. I don't even really care what happens in the background in CDI. I just want the API. But if the mm -hmm. API doesn't exist in our CDI API repo, I can't use it. Mm -hmm. Even though the API may exist in the actual. Uh, CDI repo. Actually, I, I think it just answered my own question because it can exist in CDI itself, but don't exist in CDI API. So, but it's, it's sort of like that staging thing. So, yeah. Well, in that case, you just essentially had an ineffectual PR in the kubevert because you're not actually, you may have updated a commit, but you still didn't get the API. So, you'd have to try, you'd have to regenerate that API and update kubevert again, I think. If I understand correctly, well, um, if you want to use the API, it needs to exist, right? That's mm -hmm. yes. So you you won't make the PR to vendor in a new API if the new API doesn't exist in your vendor. In. So you right, exactly. Yeah, for some um, reason, I'm getting the uh, the GitHub uh, unicorn when I try to access our container, our API repo. Um, uh, did, did you see that uh, GitHub accidentally released their private SSH keys, so they have to like regenerate and replace all the, the GitHub uh, uh, host SSH keys? Yeah. Uh, okay. If you uh, actually let me let me go find uh, the link to this blog. You gotta you gotta change the SSA key there. Put it in the chat. Okay. So um I don't know, do we have any other other thoughts on this? I'm trying to it feels to me like if we uh, try to allow kubevert to track commits in the main branches of, of CDI that this could be okay. I'm trying to, we had, we did have a reason for not doing it uh, in the past. And I think that may have been because um, it's possible to choose a commit that, you know, we don't regard as like 
fully fleshed out, but I think it's up to the people who submit the PRs to Kubevert uh, to choose commits that are known to be. And if I remember right, at that point in time, we, we didn't have the split between the CDI API and CDI itself. So mm -hmm. you'd be vendoring in like the entirety of CDI instead of just the API. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it may be fine given our current uh, priorities and the way we've been doing things for a while. Um, you know, maybe something we'll revisit later. And I mean, CDI and Kubevert are, you know, uh, sibling projects with uh, crossover from developers. It's not like we're vendoring some uh, some random library on GitHub where we don't even know the developers. So, I mean, in that case, you have to be careful and choose stable releases. But here, there's a lot of synchronization in, at play. So we understand the risks and and uh, we understand the projects well enough to do that to track main I think okay um uh, so random somewhat related question do we want to start thinking about a v1 for cdi so we're not a beta api anymore and you know what is required for that yeah i mean i've been i've been personally thinking about this for uh quite some time um i've been kind of wanting to delay uh any of those uh until we adopt the populators uh concept within kubernetes and mm -hmm. Also, when we potentially have uh, workflows that don't require the use of data volumes. And I think, you know, because some of those, there could be some, uh, you know, gymnastics that we need to do uh, that you wouldn't want to do with a V1 API. Um, obviously, we maintain compatibility, but if things, things are going to be probably moving a little bit more than you would expect for a V1 API with some of these changes. So I feel like after we complete that work, we would be in a good position to be branding V1. Right, I agree. But maybe just you know, start thinking about writing down the requirements, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But you know, being beta gives us a little flexibility to be more uh, breaking if we have to for whatever reason. We try not to, but if there's a really good reason, much harder when it be one than a beta one. Yeah. Okay, it looks like four here is the same as one. All right. Um, okay. Any other thoughts on this one uh, before we move on? Hopefully that, I think we got to a, a resolution on that. All right. Um, any other uh, topics before we start uh, in with the issue triage? Just throwing it out for a quick open floor. Okay. All right. So let me go and uh, open up this tab. So we ended last time on the expected hash uh, to data volumes issue. So let's go up to the next issue here. Oops. Uh oh. Maybe this is related to what you were talking about, Alexander. No, uh, I think okay. it's just really, really slow. Just slow. Okay. All right. So no information of storage. Actually, I'm, I'm working on this on a piano fixing this. Okay. All right. So we have a. It's if there's a. An unnamed storage class. We discussed it. Uh, I thought we discussed it last time. Oh, okay. 
so we we already covered this one in in uh in the call oh, okay. all right yeah here we go i stayed two weeks ago all right sorry that i didn't check the actual issue we left off on 2378 um okay so we got all of these all right you're right okay so is this the one we need to uh, do, or did we cover this one? I forget now. It says lot life, life cycle rotten, so I guess maybe this is. Uh, yeah, we need to start on that one. OK, thanks. All right. All right, when importing a containerized disk via data volume definition to block CSI driver, the disk has the wrong permissions. When importing to a file driver, it imports with the correct permissions. All right, I'm a little confused by that because a block device wouldn't have permissions, but maybe they mean a file system built on top. Let's see. Oh, so they, they mean a file system PV on this. Okay. Um, all right. I see. Let me go to the end here and get the latest context of what we're talking about. Um, Is this specific to, I see Alexander, you commented here, is this specific to a particular driver or what's going on with this? Do you yeah, remember? It, so the, the, the problem is for actual volume of block, um, the FS group doesn't apply. So um, since uh, 155, we're running rootless. Mm -hmm. So the permissions on the block device are essentially wrong. Um, and this is known in Kubernetes. Um, I, I linked the article that sort of explains why, but the issue is on the, uh, runtime, um, which, which runtime you're running, Cryo or Container D or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I think mainly Container D has this issue, uh, since, you know, all our testing is on Cryo, uh, Cryo does it automatically already. Okay. Um. But basically, with that flag enabled, it will sort of follow what FS group says. Uh, mm. um, so do I, I think this actually got resolved because there there hasn't been any activity after I've you know explained all of it. So I, either they completely gave up or it, it worked for them now. So do we want to do we want to have this documented anywhere other than in so uh, the issue here? So yes, we we did bring this up a few months ago, and we I made a PR that documents this in the CDI repo. So there's a whole document dedicated just to oh, this. Okay. Okay. I just right, I probably so. just forgot to link the issue or something. Okay. So I'm gonna say since uh, uh, the proposed solution should resolve the problem. And we have documented this uh, in the repo. I am closing this issue. Oops, reopen. Okay. Cool. All right. So let's go back. Uh, next, we are um, allow use of image pull secrets on CDI operator infra and workload pods. Okay, um, I'm just going to scan this here. Private registries. Yeah, I think this is uh, this is completed. Um, 
Oh yeah, I see. There's a. Let's see well, that, yeah, this guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So maybe we could, if you click on the PR, I'm surprised it didn't uh, close this one automatically. Did you mark? Uh, oh, it does, oh, okay. Yeah, he he didn't use the fixes. Uh, he um, macro or whatever in the description. Okay, but can yeah, I just this is this is closed. Can I just write like fixes in here and it would close it? Uh, you can try it. Every time I go to these top tabs, I'm getting this popover <laughs> from uh, from Zoom. Okay, so this is twenty three ninety five. So I'm going to write fixes. I, I think you have to do it in the description. I'm not hundred percent okay. sure though, but. I'll try it here and see what happens. <laughs> I can't comment. Interesting. Yeah, I think GitHub is having issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm having the same issues. <laughs> I'm just going to close it this way. Fix by 2589. All right. All right. So we are next to CDI with restric restricted policy fails to import on volume. That is ext4 because it cannot remove lost found. I think we talked, I feel like we talked about this. I have a deja vu of a conversation about really only trying to remove the disk.img file and not other stuff that's on the PVC. Yes, we had we had this with a, uh, I want to say NetApp uh, backend where they had okay. some read-only um, snapshot directory in, in the, in the volume itself, and that was causing uh, CDI to fail. Okay. But didn't we fix it for the lost and found uh, thing? I have a vague memory of uh, of that one specifically being handled. I can try to dig it out. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna write just a note here. This may be fixed or... No, that was me to open this. Uh... Oh, it hasn't been then? Okay. Uh, so I, I actually don't remember the circumstances why I opened it. Uh, I, I believe Michael did some testing and he said it worked for him. I, I think I tried it with a Ceph. Uh, I, I might be completely wrong here, so... As opposed to deleting everything. Uh, so we need somebody that would probably be willing to take this one. So I think we have a newer issue that's about the same thing or a very similar thing. And eventually both of them will be fixed by the same uh, logic. Okay, let's look and see if we can find it uh, f further up in the list here, and then we can. Yeah, that's the fourth. Uh, 2635. Yeah. Okay, right. Okay, so let's mark the. Do we want to. Uh, which one should be become the. I mean, the older one has the more context. Um, more comments. So this is 2495. I think we should just close the newer one as a dupe. Uh, I like the newer one better. <laughs> okay. 
because I think if uh, well, I I, I um, yeah, I I think that if FS Group and everything is set up, you should be able to delete delete lost and found. Um, okay, so replaced by twenty six thirty five. Yeah, if if you're allowed to comment, <laughs> seems like I am, but it says I'm not. Oh, okay. This is superseded. How do you spell that? Really, that looks wrong to me, but I'll trust the almighty AI. Uh, what do we have? 2635. Okay, cool. All right. Um, let's go back. So data volume resource disappeared. I'm guessing this is maybe a garbage collection. Yeah, I think so. I think here there is just that the user wasn't aware yeah. of the garbage collection. Mm -hmm. Garbage collecting. Okay, one question. Is there another way to extend? No, so this is kind of, all right, talking about, yeah, I, I agree that we should be able to close this. Uh, awesome. Doing some good cleaning up here, all right. Let's see. All right. Clone progress metric doesn't meet the metrics naming conventions. Yeah, I created a Jira card for to cover this one. Okay. Is this um is this publicly visible? It should be because we're yeah. Okay. All right. So let's keep it open. Um, until the PR gets merged. Oh my gosh, I wish I could move this block thing out of the way. Sorry guys, I'm not precise enough with my mousing today. All right, smart clone fails with no PVC found. I think I tried to help here. If you scroll down, um, yeah, I was just suspecting that the volume snapshot itself was having issues. Oh yeah, yeah, that's uh, that that CSI driver won't populate restore size, and uh, I think we kind of rely on it. I think, and rightly so. I mean, that's the right thing to do. And that provisioner has an open PR to populate the restore size on the snapshot, but I don't think it's accepted yet. Let's take a look. Still open. And it's missing a DCO. All right. So I guess the question is, do we feel that I mean, I don't want to have workarounds in our code for every deficiency in random provisioners. So do we think that what we're doing is the, like, do we expect restore size, restore size to be populated correctly and therefore it's okay for us to rely on it? Yeah, I, I think, I tend to think that it's, it is it should be populated and uh, we should rely on it and okay so uh, yeah we could just say that's uh this is being addressed uh or this is a bug in um in this other provisioner and not a cdi bug so closing the issue we could say it that way yeah okay yeah, that sounds good yeah th this isn't the first provisioner with this exact issue I remember another one. I think it was uh, 
Synology, maybe. I, um, I, I forget the exact provisioner, uh, but we we tracked down the provisioner, tracked down the line of code, and they fixed it pretty much immediately. So yeah, because how else would we know how big to make the PVC to restore into if we yeah. don't need the restore size? So. Yeah, and we just can't get in the business of having ugly workarounds for every possible provisioner. That's fair. Okay. All right, let's go on. So errors when doing concurrent host assisted clones. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I opened it a while ago while doing the volume snapshot cloning. And I just hit it when I was doing concurrent clones. It's uh, what happens is you get a couple of restarts on the clone source pods. Um, I think I, I even took the logs. I managed to grab some logs. It says something like permission denied. Mm. I, back back at that time, I couldn't make much sense of it, but the issue still stands. Um, you would get a couple of restarts and that would slow down the host assisted clone. Okay. I, I, yeah, it's because we yeah we can't really attach multiple sources, uh, source pods to the same PVC. Is that basically the issue? Um, I don't think so. I don't think there's a problem uh, doing that. I'm also hitting this on uh, one node cluster. So okay, so it it should work. It's uh, okay. The scheduling business is out of scope for this uh, card. I put it in another issue. Okay. All right. So this one's a real thing. It's going to need some attention. So I, I don't think there's anything that we can do in this meeting uh, to further advance it, except for, uh, you know, calling attention to it. And if somebody wants to look at it. So Alex, uh, the PR I linked in the chat, you know, think is is related to this at all okay well so this it's basically setting the source pod affinity um but you said you, that, but you said you have the issue with single node so it probably um doesn't matter yeah the affinity business i put it in a separate issue so this would happen on a single node. Okay. All right. So uh, that one's going to need some more attention. Um, let's go to the next one. Unify auth in a single authorized data volume. This you also opened, Alex. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just working on it, and I'm getting all the attention I need. So. Uh, there's an open PR and uh, my should we assign it? Should we assign it to you? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. CDI download fails with FIPS enabled kernel when using HTTPS source. Uh, one second. All right, there we go. Attempting to use CDI to download a QCOW2 image from HTTPS source and porter pod immediately fails. NVD kits involved. Yeah, can you? Uh, go scroll that top box sideways a bit. I think you, so you can see the problem doing head request URL. Unable to, 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 to out of memory. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay. I mean. I thought we were, are we not testing with uh, FIPS enabled yet? We do that downstream and uh, 
OpenShift virtualization testing. Okay. I'm just and, wondering if, uh, if it. Yeah, there's no issues as far as I know. Does it have to do with Does it have to do with the uh, the server that we're going to? This yeah, virtual? my my speculation is that that server it doesn't have a strong enough cipher suite or something for FIPS, or it just doesn't okay. like it for whatever reason. Would be my guess, but I, I don't know. Okay. Um. Could it be the PR limit we set on uh, head? Uh, was it, it says it's failing on the head request. So. Um, I was going to, I wanted to ask um, if they find, if this happens with other, uh, with other disk images, such as um, like Fedora or, you know, any other, with other web servers. The... Isn't it weird that they get an uh, out of memory though? Not just. Uh, it is. You know. It does seem. It seems like NBD Kit itself. Oh, it's QMU. Yeah, QMU image. Uh, requested export not available. That's. I don't know what that exactly means, but. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly possible there's an NBD kit issue here um, to look further into. Um, is there a way that we can, what's the, what would be the way to, to get them to, like, I forget if we do like pre-allocation equals true, would that disable NBD kit? Cause that would be another way to test, you know, if it's in NBD kit. Right, is there something that they could change their data volume spec to specifically get rid of the built-in conversion? No, I think that, I think this head request is something that we do in our Go code. To, uh, maybe not. It's QMU image. Oh, QMU so. image. Yeah, okay. Um, so that's part of the direct like import uh, with right. with streaming conversion. Right. So I, I can't remember like if we do there. I feel like there's an odd sort of uh, no I orthogonal think, option that would disable. I think if we did uh, now would have to be G, like gzip or uh, rxc or xc or something like that would or scratch space. Okay. All right, so I can't suggest that option. Um, Maybe they have it. But yeah, yeah. I think Fedora hosts like compressed images, but I don't know if Ubuntu does. Mm -hmm. All right, so some follow up there, um, just to move forward with it. All right, and then let's go to, looks like we may have time for one more high availability. So single replica, asking for two replicas. Uh, yeah, there's a PR on this, I think it's still, Hasn't merged yet, though, I think. Yeah, here it is. And that was opened on the 7th of February, so. Yeah, we, we asked them to make a few changes, and there hasn't been any activity on in a while. Okay. 
So either they got distracted or uh, something, and now it, it needs to revise. So that'll be more fun. Okay. All right. So it seems that nothing specific we want to do with this yet. I mean, at some point we could decide if um, if it's a stale request or something. But for now, I think it's not that old. So. All right, let's jump into one more. Um, CDI download fails due to NBD kit curl error. It's another uh, from the same reporter. Large image file fails. I wonder if this is because of the, the way that the blocks, whatever, are for XZ. No, I don't know. Let's see. Let me scroll this thing over. Conversion to raw failed, could not convert. Failed sending data to the peer, connection died. Another Ubuntu image. Okay, so this is uh, potential to add some filters. Okay, so Richard was gonna play with it. Let's see, what did he find? Add filter retry. We did. I actually added the retry filter already. Oh yeah, here, okay. Have you been able to replicate? I can't test this unless the fix is backported. Okay, we like we're, said we're working we, on we're working yeah. on that. Uh, okay, cool. There's a PR open for 154, um, but there's something wrong with the build that I haven't figured out yet. But. Should we reference the PR? Um, can we just like, do, can somebody let me know what that number is and I'll just put it in here? It is 2669. Actually, no, that's the wrong one. I'm sorry. It's 2666. Okay. Let's try this again. 2666. Okay. Here we go. All right, and that brings us to um, 10 minutes to the top of the hour, which is our scheduled end time. So one last call for any other small things. If anybody wants to uh, have any topics, otherwise we can call it a call. All right, thanks everybody for joining. See you again in two weeks. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.